everyone, welcome back to Mike and his whiteboard. My name is Mike, this is my whiteboard, and today we're gonna to talk about the iron fly. So the iron fly, or if and you might know it as the beef and cheddar, is actually just a defined wrist spread where the short strikes share the same strike. So we can think about it as a defined wrist straddle. We can think about it as an iron condor where the short strikes have merged. There's a lot of different ways to think about it. And essentially, it's just another combination of buying calls, selling calls, buying puts, and selling puts. So let's get into it and discuss some attributes of this strategy. So the iron fly, we'll think of it as a straddle with defined risk for all intents and purposes. So we're gonna look at this stock price here and we're gonna assume that the stock price is at 80. So if we've got a stock price at 80, what we would do to create an iron fly is sell a put and sell a call on that same strike. So we're looking at the at the money strike and let's say we can get a total credit of $3.50 for the put and call that we're selling. Now, since we're defined risk, we need to buy an out of the money put and we need to buy an out of the money call as well. So we'll look at the 75 strike to look at that out of the money put that we'll purchase. And we'll say we'll purchase that for 60 cents. And we'll look to the upside of 85 for the call that we'll purchase because that's gonna be out of the money. And we'll say that that's worth about 40 cents. So we've talked about volatility skew before, so that basically states that puts will trade generally richer than calls, so we've got that evident here. So we're looking at a pretty normal market for this strategy. So we've got the $3.50 credit that we've taken in, we've paid 60 cents to purchase the put to define our risk to the downside, and we've purchased our call for 40 cents to define our risk to the upside, which gives us a net credit of $2.50 for a credit. So basically our max profit is going to be realized if the stock price is at 80.00 at expiration. So you can see the green dotted line above this strategy and that's pretty much what the profit and loss risk graph is going to look like. So as you can see, the highest point is right above 80 and that's because since we're selling this out of the money spread, so we've got an out of the money call spread and an out of the money put spread where the short strikes are at the money, if the stock price is at exactly 80.00, then neither the put nor the call will be in the money by one penny, so these will actually expire worthless. So if we collect $2.50 total for this whole trade, and the stock price expires at 80.00 at expiration, all of these options would expire worthless, and we would be able to keep this total credit of $2.50 for 100% max profit. Now, we've talked about this before, so we'll talk through it again, and we're gonna talk about what might happen if the stock price goes up or goes down a little bit. So, if the stock price were to go to 81, now our short call would be in the money, our short put and long put would be out of the money, so that would expire worthless at expiration. So, all we really need to do to calculate what our profit would be at expiration is just subtract the difference from where the stock price is to where our short calls and puts are. So now that we know we've got our 80 strike, we've got a short put and call there. If at expiration the stock price is at 81, we would just have to buy back this call for $1 of intrinsic value because again, a call is just the contract to that allows the buyer to buy 100 shares of stock at a certain price. So if I sold them that option to do so, if the stock price is at 81 and our call if or the stock price is at 81 and our call option is at 80, that gives them $1 of intrinsic value at expiration. So I would take my credit of $2.50, I would have to buy back this call for $1, which leaves me with profit of $1.50 total. Now, let's say the stock price went down to, let's say, 78. We would do the same thing, but now it's to the downside. So if the stock price is at 78, I know that my short call and my long call are going to be out of the money. Because again, if a call contract is the right for someone to buy 100 shares of stock, if they can buy it at 78, they're not going to exercise their 80 call at the 80 strike, and we have the right to exercise the 85 call, so that's gonna be worthless, as well as the short call here. So both of those are gonna be worthless and expire out of the money. However, our put will be in the money if the stock price is at 78 at expiration. So again, since a put contract is the right for someone to sell their shares to us, 
at expiration. So if someone bought a put, we sold them that put contract at 80. So if the stock price is at 78 and we have a contract with them where they can sell me their shares at 80, then they can do that if they want to. So that put contract is going to have $2 of intrinsic value. So I received $2.50 credit total. And if at expiration the stock price is at 78, I would have to buy back that put for $2, which leaves me with 50 cents of credit. So that's an easy way to calculate where your profit and loss is. Again, max profit for this trade is going to be right at 80.00, and that's when the stock price pins the short strikes at expiration because none of these options would be in the money at all, so they would expire worthless and we would receive this full $2.50 credit. Now, one thing I wanna point out with the iron fly is that we have lower risk, so we are receiving a lower credit. So if we just imagine that these calls and puts that are long were not there, we would actually receive $3.50 for this trade. So that would be a straddle. So that's a, an undefined risk trade, and it's not allowable in an IRA account. However, an iron fly is, and that's because we have defined risk to the upside, and defined risk to the downside. So if I received $2.50 credit for this, my max loss, if I know that I've got a five point wide spread on the call side and a five point wide spread on the put side, I know that my max loss is going to be $2.50. And that's because, let's say the stock price goes all the way up to 90, I know that I've got defined risk and my call spread will have intrinsic value of five points, since I would be short a call at 80 and long a call at 85. So that's five points, I would just subtract my credit from that to determine my max loss. Same thing on the downside, and what's really important about this is that when I lower my risk at all, I'm going to receive a lower credit, and that's going to give me a lower probability of profit. And again, when we talk about credit and widening our break-even points, that's really what's going to widen our probability of profit. Because if I have a wider range to be profitable or a wider range to break even, that's going to yield me a higher probability of profit than if I were to define the risk here. However, this trade is a great trade for IRA accounts because it's got defined risk. So it is allowable and it's something that we will do here so let's go to the next slide and we'll compare iron flies to straddles a little bit further. So again, an iron fly is essentially a straddle, but it's defined risk. So profits are realized closer to expiration with an iron fly. And the, real, the reason I say this is because we know with extrinsic value that the at the money options are going to hold their value closer to expiration. So if we, if we think about time value and the value of options, the lower days till expiration we have, you'll see the pretty much the premium kind of gets sucked out of those out of the money options. So you'll see that, but you can see that my fingers right in the middle here are pretty much staying constant. They'll deplete a little bit, but at the money options are always going to hold their value the longest when you get closer to expiration because that's where the most extrinsic value lies. So profits are mo the majority of profits are realized closer to expiration with an iron fly. And that's because we have those long options that are losing money while our short options are gaining money. So if we think about how options decay, if I have two short options that are at the money, and let's say the stock price isn't moving at all, and I'm those options that are short are decaying over time, those ones are becoming profitable, I do have two long options that are going to be decaying as well. So since I purchased those for 60 cents and 40 cents, as you saw in the example before, those are going to be decaying and we're gonna be losing on those while we're winning on the short options at the money. So if we're looking at the majority of profits, it's going to be realized closer to expiration with these sort of strategies. With a straddle, profits can be realized quickly, and when I say profits, I mean 25 to 30% of profit can be realized pretty quickly with a straddle because we no longer have those long options that are battling our profitability. We just have the short options since we have the undefined risk, and as long as the stock price stays around that range, those are going to decay pretty quickly, and we'll be able to reap the benefits of that pretty quickly as well. Another thing I want to point out is that the iron fly has a higher return on capital than a straddle does. So that's because we have defined risk, and whenever we define our risk and lower our buying power reduction or cost to be entered into a trade, it's going to help our return on capital. So generally, when we talk about defined risk versus undefined risk, we'll usually see a higher return on capital with defined risk when we compare it to 
something like a straddle that's undefined risk, and that's because a straddle might take a larger buying power reduction than an iron fly would because we're defining our risk. Now, the caveat to that is that our iron fly is generally going to have a lower probability of profit than our straddle. So it's going to have a higher return on capital generally, but since we're defining our risk and capping our profitability, reducing our credit in a sense, that's lowering our break-evens, it's shortening our break-evens, which is going to lower our probability of profit. Now, on the other hand, since we have a straddle that's undefined risk and that's allowable in margin accounts, we can increase our probability of profit when compared to an iron fly because we're going to have a larger credit, which is going to widen our break-even points and increase that probability of profit. So again, iron flies are defined risk and straddles are undefined risk. So this has been an example of an iron fly. Hopefully you enjoyed that breakdown. Thanks so much for tuning in. My name is Mike. If you've got any questions or feedback at all, if you want to see any more segments like this, shoot me an idea at support at doit.com, support at or you can tweet us at Doe Trading, at Doe Trader Mike, or at. And until tomorrow, we'll see you next time.